been great. Welcome back, guys, to another amazing, beautiful, edifying episode of Heavenly Bond. <laughs> noted, noted. <laughs> I'm kidding. Welcome back, guys, to another amazing, great episode of Heavenly Bond. I actually want to do a, a petition for you to not do the interest anymore. What? Yeah, because your energy is so low. All right, heard? guys, welcome back. No, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Producers literally <laughs> panicking. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I had to come with a calm spirit. With a relaxing spirit. Okay. With a peaceful spirit. Amen. Thank thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, thank you guys for clicking on this video. Um, Again beyond grateful for you all today we have an amazing amazing episode which was led by god's almighty yes we are so excited about today's episode because we're talking about discipline and obedience in the faith and i feel like hey. this is something that a lot of us really want to know more about mm -hmm. because we're always walking through being either uh disciplined or walking through obedience and how does that look like how does that look like in the bible um, how can we, you know, strengthen ourselves in that mm. area as well if we're lacking? And, and yeah, it's going to be a convicting message. Not only hopefully you guys get something out of this, but yeah. also for us, I feel like it is so interesting when we were studying in the in the word. There's so many examples of this yeah. in the word and it just makes us not feel alone. Like, Yeah. You know? Amen. I feel like... Uh discipline and obedience is so so key in our spiritual walk and even in our life in general like it's very very key it's very very important so mm -hmm. um i think we're gonna dive in deep and hopefully go there with the lord and hopefully you know help you guys yeah definitely definitely get your notes your yep. notepad your pen take notes i feel like it's gonna be really good and we're gonna be referencing a lot of um scripture in the video so I really do recommend you guys to write them down and then go back after mm -hmm. the episode is over or whenever you have time to open your Bible and highlight them, right? Like, mm -hmm. literally go to the Word. Because um, obviously, it's one thing to hear this, but another thing is to actually, like, be proactive in opening the Bible. Yeah. So I think definitely do that because it's, yeah, it's really good. For sure. Um, We're definitely going to um spill some good stuff, so be ready with your notes. Also, we wanted to read to... Um, comments or reviews on apple podcast again thank you guys for downloading showing love um a lot of you guys have been so supportive so this one comes from neil paul i hope i'm saying it right so glad that i have people around my age doing god's work and following a calling hearing your podcast have been a blessing and get me to ask, and get me to ask myself questions about my faith mm. that was that has not been asked before amen truly has allowed me to dig deeper God bless both of you and praying over y'all as you continue your journey with the podcast and life as well. Amen. That's so sweet. Thank Glory you so God. much. That's, that's awesome. That's what I love. Like saying like you, you're you wanting to go deeper with the Lord. Like yes. questioning myself. Like am I living how I'm supposed to live? Like yeah. that's the best thing ever. That to me is what transformed me. When I started listening to certain mm -hmm. people and I'm like, why are you walking in this, you know, power and this anointing and yeah. i'm not tapped into that why mm. is that and it, it asks myself like what am i doing in my faith like what am i doing in my walk that i'm yeah. lacking you know That's why is so god good. not using me like that that is so good yeah. i agree i feel like you know, when you're really growing in your faith, that's mm -hmm. like when you start asking yourself, like, am I walking the walk or yeah. am I just talking the talk? Like, mm -hmm. how does my life look like? Like, is is my life just representing the Lord? How am I responding when yes. God is teaching me new things? I feel like that is literally where transformation happens. Literally, bro. And that is so cool. Like, I, I love you guys. That's so awesome. I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. I got another one. Librarian Sid. Was literally librarian like, said yeah must listen to must listen christian pod five stars i love 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 this podcast Yay. i found it on instagram randomly and started from the very beginning when they were on youtube i'm so happy they moved on to apple podcast i listened to one episode every sunday on my morning walk it's so real relatable and always on time it's both convicting and, com and comforting to know that I'm not the only one with these thoughts. I learn something new each episode. Amen. That's amazing. That's so cool. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. That's so awesome. Yeah. And another thing, we're growing like crazy on Instagram as well as on mm -hmm. TikTok. Um, 
we're so thankful. Like our platform is truly being lifted by the Lord and we're yes. seeing so many fruits and we're growing so rapidly. And I definitely have to say it's because of the Lord a hundred percent. Like if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be here. Number yeah. one, number two is because of like, I am going to be honest. I feel like it's because of how we are mm -hmm. because we are just so unserious. And yeah. if you watch our videos, you'll be like, these kids are literally so unserious. <laughs> and you know, if you're new here and you watch like, I don't know, like the latest episodes where we're joking around, yeah, you might yeah. be like, okay, they're like a little too much. But honestly, guys, we just joke around so much. We're siblings. Like we're siblings, so we just like fight, bicker back and how, forth. How does this trend go? We're siblings. Of course, you want to be like me. We're siblings. Of course, okay. you literally okay, okay. do everything that All I do. All right. All right. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, like we always want to keep that up. We want to mm -hmm. keep that essence. And we just want to keep allowing the Lord to keep convicting us. No free ads. So <laughs> <laughs> we want to allow the Lord to keep convicting us mm -hmm. and keep transforming our lives because, like I said, Imano oh, is, is what, 20, 21? 21? Yeah. And I'm going to turn 25 in like two weeks. Um, oh my goodness, you are. Yeah. Yo, you are. Uh huh. I forgot. I'm so excited, but we're super young and like mm -hmm. we're in different stages of life as well. Like, I'm going to be a mom very soon. That's crazy. Um, So. We just want to keep showing you guys that, like, we're young and we have things going on in our lives. But how is the Lord in our lives? Like, mm -hmm. we don't make time for God. God is literally our life, you literally. know? So Yeah, yeah. That's super good. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Because, again, like, we're young, like she said. Like, we're also doing life. Yeah. Like, I feel like um, this platform wouldn't be this platform if God didn't ordain it, you know? And God right. didn't put a hand mm -hmm. over our life. So, um, I hope that you're learning and you're growing with us, you yeah. know? Uh, and doing life together. Can I say something? Sure. I saw in your Instagram stories the other day, you were... I'm kidding. The size is absolutely I'm insane. You guys go back and look at his eyes. He do... literally rolled his Don't eyes. Don't go back. Stay right here. No, go back. Don't go back. Go back. Why do you do that? Because I... Explain yourself. Because you're about to eat me up. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm over this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the baby. <laughs> I was gonna say that I saw your Instagram stories about mm -hmm. like the Q and A you did. Yeah. And then someone asks like, "Oh, why aren't you guys or you? I don't know if they say us or you. Like, why aren't you guys like collaborating with other content creators? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you want to touch on that? Um, sure. Because you know what, I feel like. So I was I brought to the Lord, mm -hmm. and I told him like, "Thank you, God, for lifting us up and like blessing us so much in our platforms, and we've just been us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we've always been us." Uh -huh. And I got this message and this girl was like, how come I don't see you guys like in these conferences or like collaborating mm -hmm. with these people? Like she was very specific about it. Yeah, yeah. And I get it. Like she's, she's very she's, innocent. You know, she's she was asking. like, she was asking a question. Yeah. And then you answer that. And I was like, oh, I think we should like talk about it a little bit. Yeah, of course. Um, there's this, I feel like there's not really a, a reason for us to collab. I mean, again, if it's God ordained. If it's God ordained, we'll collab with some of these people. But again, these influencers aren't really, they're just influencers. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be straight up. Most of these people are not even walking the walk. They talk about Jesus in one post and then the next post, they're posting stuff that is just so contrary. They're making music with worldly music. They're making videos with worldly music behind it, cursing and all of that extra stuff. They're all trying to ride the wave and try to do trendy stuff. And they use Jesus to uplift their platform. For us, we just talk about Jesus, and the Lord uplifts our platform. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we don't even do it to get clicks or likes. We just love him, and we do it authentically. And that's how you know where the Lord resides. So us collabing with people and trying to get, oh, let's collab. It will be big. Like, I don't. We don't need to collab with nobody. I generally, personally, don't desire to collab with nobody unless, again, the Lord says so. There's no reason. A lot of these people... I don't see them eye to eye. And I'm not saying I'm above them. I'm not saying I'm better or whatever. No, it's just where I am with the Lord, I feel like it's not it's not compatible. It's mm -hmm. not compatible. And the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. And a lot of people, you know, lack certain discernment. Mm -hmm. So they just right. see it as like, they're talking about Jesus. Amen. Look how everybody, when they saw Lil Nas, Lil Nas X, talking about God. Everybody yeah. was riding on that boat. When it's like, when you're spiritually discerned, you know, like, come on, bro. Yeah. Be for real. Like, exactly. where, are the, where are his fruits? And so... I don't feel the need to collab with some of these uh, influencers. And I know God is still using them. 
God, it's not that God is not using them. Right. They're men of God and they're women of God. God is definitely using them. People are coming to the Lord through them. But me personally, it's just like not my cup of tea. Yeah. Like I, that's, that's something that I think is really important because I've been doing this for almost six years and I wasn't focused a hundred percent on Christianity because mm -hmm. obviously like I became on fire for the Lord like three years ago. Yeah. And you know, in the influencer industry, in the influencer world, even if you're talking about the Lord, mm -hmm. it is very, it's a strategic move mm -hmm. to collaborate with other people so you can get noticed by yeah. other audiences, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, even in my career, I, I definitely didn't do that. I never had any type of collabs with other creators so I can grow in my platform. Right. Everything that I did was myself, literally mm -hmm. myself. That's how I grew and um, I think it was like last year that I collaborated, but it wasn't even a collab. It was literally me with two of my influencer friends. And we're yeah. like, yo, we want to like meet in person. Let's go to like Jamaica. I went to Jamaica. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, but we didn't even create content together. Like it was just like authentic, authentic. like just us hanging out. Um, and the same thing applies with Christian content creators. Mm -hmm. And this is the things that you guys maybe not see. And we see because we are in the industry and we know. Yeah, we know. Um, so definitely, I don't think that we need to be in this platform or be with these people or be in this situation or this position right. for us to grow or be friends or be seen by others because that's just so not authentic, you know? And that's so not us. Either. And that's so not us. Like, we that's have so such us. a small circle in real life of yeah, people that real. we hang out with. And Imano's friend is my friends. My friends yeah, are your yeah. friends, <laughs> literally. And they don't even have platforms. Yeah. So we're just like that in general. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if if it's like an encounter with someone that we love and mm -hmm. we generally are connected because of the Lord, then you guys will notice that. Yeah. But know that like everything that we do, we try and we let the Lord sanctify us all mm -hmm. the time, you know? So we don't do things based on what we desire or what looks like is good or right. what people are doing. Mm -hmm. It's more about... Lord, what do you want us to do? Who do you want us to connect with? Exactly. You know, everything is authentic. Everything is authentic. And sometimes, you know, you can't go places where the Lord has not called you to be. Mm. You know, so because if you go places where the Lord has not called you to be, then the Lord's hand is no longer covering you. Right. So for you to think that something looks right, but the Lord hasn't called you to be there, you're endangering your spiritual life. You're endangering the devil to come and tempt you because if the Lord did not call you to do these things, but yet you're doing it out of your own accord, there is no spiritual cover. That's so you. good. Another thing too is that we also have to understand that everyone is in their own lane mm -hmm. and everyone's journey is so different, even if your journey looks different than others. Mm -hmm. Like yours might look different than mine, but mm -hmm. doesn't mean that mine is worse or better than yours. Exactly. Because someone is doing something and you're not doing it, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you are missing out on some sort of thing. Like, yeah. your life is so beautiful. And I feel like the moment that we realize that, we stop comparing ourselves or wanting things that are not for us. Right. That are not for us. That's it. And and social media is kind of like a really tricky place because you do see that a lot. And mm -hmm. you're, like, confronted with something mm -hmm. every day. And you see, you're like, oh, I wish I was there or whatever. Those thoughts can come. Mm -hmm. But, again, it's giving it back to the Lord and be like, God... Whatever you have for me, I know it's better. And usually when I do that and I surrender everything to the Lord, my friendships, my platforms, yeah. my relationships, everything is like, I always end up doing what makes me happy. Exactly. And it's usually like the, the most simplest things like mm -hmm. coloring books. And ah, like. <laughs> they're crossword puzzles. They're crossword kid puzzles. Live slow life. No, so. legit. But yeah, to, to, to wrap it up, it's like, I don't feel like we need to collab with anybody, you know? And yeah. if we do collab with somebody, it's like people that we know. Like Matthew in the last episode, we're <laughs> we gonna have our Matthew. other friend on here as well. That people that we do life with, like you know, and um, yeah. But there's no need to collab. There's no need to have name people and our stuff. Yeah. God has already been lifting us. We don't need none of that, mm -hmm. and we don't desire none of that. So all love to them. All love to everybody that's doing yeah. God's work. And I'm so proud of everyone. Like, so yeah, I feel like now the movement of Christianity is so amazing. Of course, you know, like, even a if lot it's of not coming to the faith. exactly how you may think it should look like, or I should think it should look like, it doesn't matter. Jesus is still being Jesus glorified. is still being glorified. Amen. Okay, so yeah. let's go into the word because discipline and obedience, you mm -hmm. guys, it is something that we look he don't like. Yeah, let's be honest, we don't enjoy mm -hmm. being disciplined by the Lord. We don't enjoy sometimes walking in obedience because it calls us to sacrifice something that we love. Yeah. Right. But oftentimes we notice that when we walk in obedience and we walk in discipline, mm -hmm. we produce so much fruit. Amen. 
we produce so much endurance and, yes. and that leads to so much hope and faith in the Lord and we More. grow closer to him, right? Preach, preacher. So I just really would love to see what you have because you're very happy about your notes. Now you go first. <clears throat> me? Ah! <laughs> I'm sitting up the table for you. you want me to, okay, I'll start it off with um, this, but that was really good what you said because discipline, discipline is something that um, a lot of Christians are lacking. And that's why you're not seeing spiritual growth, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing spiritual growth because you are consistent with the Lord for a certain amount of time. But because you haven't seen what you've prayed for or what you asked the Lord to do, you deviate. Oof. So your, your, your obedience is not really obedience, it's circumstantial. So what you're doing is based on your circumstances. If this is not happening for me, well... Uh, I think I'm going to just do what I used to do, mm -hmm. you know? So you're not really being obedient. Mm -hmm. And so that's why a lot of us don't see fruit in our spiritual life because we have to be disciplined. We have to be disciplined. Um, the Bible says this, God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. What scripture is that? Hebrews 12, 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness, like you were saying, and peace for those who have been trained by it. Mm. When we are disciplined with the Lord, there's a certain endurance that we build. There's a certain habit that we build. And we start seeing like transformation in our faith mm -hmm. um, spiritually because sacrifice, the Bible says that obedience is greater than sacrifice obedience is greater than sacrifice. No matter what we give up to the Lord, Lord, I give you my time, I give you my phone, I give you this, I fast for this long, you're sacrificing eating, but yet you're not seeing any change in your spiritual life is because you're not obedient to what God is telling you. Mm -hmm. No matter for how long you're fasting, are you enduring in the word of God? Are you enduring in prayer? Are you actually living out that uh, obedience for God? Or are you just sacrificing something for him? He yeah. doesn't care about your sacrifice. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Jacob, I love Esau. I hate it. It said and with Cain and Abel, uh, Cain's sacrifice wasn't pleasant to the Lord, you know, because he gave him his seconds. It mm -hmm. wasn't the best of the best. So when you're obedient, you your heart posture t tends to change to always give God your best, no matter what. And your that first builds harvest. your first harvest, and that's what builds obedience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the Bible says this as well. Where is it? Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather walk. So when you're starting to walk in obedience, there's a certain power that comes with it. Mm. There's a certain power that you're able to tap into because you've been walking with the Lord for a certain amount of time in a certain amount of ways. So it is it, really, really deep and it's something hard because it says here that it's painful. Later on, however, it produces harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Trained. Meaning you've been practicing it. Meaning you've been doing it. The Bible says that if you're a practice of, if you practice sin, there means no more sacrifice. Mm. Practice means you're doing it consistently until you become good at it. So if you're obedient to the word of God and you're obedient to the Lord, there's a certain um, skill level that you will build spiritually that you're like, whoa, now I'm more pruned to spiritual things. Now I'm able to discern certain things. Discernment doesn't just come um, because you have the spirit of God. Because you can have the spirit of God and have low discernment. Because the Spirit of God gives you the discernment, but you can have low discernment. But when you're trained by God, when you're trained in the Spirit, you're able to see and detest things in the spiritual world because you're being trained in the Spirit. Wow. You know, so you're able to discern easier. Mm. That's why there's certain things that I can walk into before. It would take me a long time to discern. But now that I see it right away, I know, whoa, this is what's going on. Certain generations in our family that before I had to pray about it and seek the Lord for it so much. But now, since I've been trained by the Lord... It's quick for me to see, oh, that's what's going on with it. Oh, there's a problem with this marriage and the kids. This is what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. My discernment is up now. That's so good. Because I'm being trained by God wow. in obedience. That's amazing. Yeah, you know how you said that um, discipline seems painful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then if you read up in Hebrews 12, in Hebrews 12, 7, it says, endure suffering as uh -huh. discipline. Endure, Yay. right? Endure. Endure. So in, in chapter 12, it is the call of endurance. And I want to read this to you guys because it's really good. 
Therefore, that's chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses Mm -hmm. surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. Mm. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So it is saying here, when you endure, you're going to be rewarded with joy. Come on. You're going to be rewarded with joy. Here says that the Lord, he endured the cross, despised Mm -hmm. the shame. Literally, he was shamed in the cross. Yeah. He was beaten. He was um, mocked. He was spit on. Yep. But then there was a joy afterwards, Mm -hmm. and he was focused on that. So he's saying that whenever we're going through discipline, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because in the moment when we're in the cross, when we're being persecuted, when we're being like disciplined by the Lord, it Mm -hmm. can seem hard, but then we see the Lord and we know that there is a joy that comes afterwards. Yes. And in verse 7, it says, Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? Mm -hmm. But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimately children and not sons. Come on. Can you read that again? This is good. Read that again. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. Yes. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? Come on. But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimately children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the father of spirits and live? Mm -hmm. For they disciplined us for for a short time based on what seemed good to them. But he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. There is a purpose. There is a big, big purpose in walking in discipline. And there is this um, story in the Bible that we all know is when Abraham was sacrificing Isaac. Mm -hmm. And that is the ultimate, the ultimate act of discipline. And I want to read it. Okay, so let's, and obedience. But before you read it, I want to tap into what you said before when, um, you know, there's certain people that you see that God, like, they're, let's say, stealing, robbing. They're doing all of these crazy stuff. And it's like, God, where is their punishment? But me, you know, I see every, everything that I'm doing, you always cut it off or you're always intervening. And everything that I try to do, it doesn't fully fulfill. Or you tell me to look the other way. If mm. I'm trying to do something, it never fully goes. And I'm always getting put down or whatever. And things are being cut short. It's because the Lord is trying to prune you and show you, like, you're my child. And I have to discipline you. Mm-hmm. I have to discipline you. These people in the world are not walking. They're not sons of God. Not everybody's a child of God, bro. This is this is this is a family that you're adopted to. You're not everybody's a child of God. Not everybody receives that grace. Mm-hmm. Everybody says that I'm a child of God, and, and yet you're living in iniquity. You're living in sin. You're not a child of God. You get what I'm saying? And that's the honest truth. So. When we got to understand that when we're adopted into this family, there will come hardships. Things like this will happen. The Lord will discipline us. And so we have to learn and endure and love that because that's the only thing that's going to keep us from going too left. Yeah. And that's the only barriers that God is using for us to stay in those standards and those barriers. So when you see people in the world not getting whatever they deserve or whatever, but you're always getting what you deserve, it's because God is putting your heart. You're his son. You know, you don't see your dad disciplining other kids when you're at the party and that kid being annoying <laughs> over here, yeah, taking candy from everybody. You don't see your dad hitting them. That's not my kid. Exactly. I'm not going to hit that kid. That's not my kid. I'm going to make sure my kid is good, though. You come over here. You better not do what he's doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's what God is doing. God is saying, you're my kid. I'm going to make sure you don't go over there. But him, he's not part of me. Exactly. And, and the thing is, though, people have this really misconstrued. It's like, if everyone was a child of God, mm-hmm. then why some people go to hell? If everyone is a child of God, then why did Jesus die on the cross? Right. 
there was a sacrifice being made exactly. for those who choose to be adopted. Yes. The, the gift is there. The gift is willing. The gift is presented. It's so for are everyone. You, it's for everyone. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, uh, God, forgive them for they not know what they do. Mm-hmm. He had compassion to for those that were literally killing him. Yep. But again, he died on the cross for them. Mm-hmm. For them. But now, are they going to go to heaven if they choose to follow themselves? Exactly. They are not. Exactly. So it is a choice. You know, following God is truly a choice. And it comes with, I'm going to be honest, it comes with a high price. Yep. Because it means that we have to lay down our sinful nature. Yes. And it is our nature. Mm-hmm. And that's why people, unfortunately, go to hell. Because they are so attached to themselves. Yep. They're so attached to the worldly ways mm-hmm. that they just don't feel like they should follow God. They don't see the, the benefit. Matter yep. of fact, they think that it's rules. They think that it's bad. Mm-hmm. But God is saying, my way is the better way. Mm-hmm. You know? And some people don't see that, unfortunately. They don't. So if everyone is a child of God, then... There won't be no sacrifice. There won't be no redemption of sin. There won't be none of that. So that whole idea that we are all children of the Lord, it is not true. Mm -hmm. But God does love everyone. That's why he sent his son to the world, to save the world. Yes. Amen. So I feel like that whole thing, I think, is is, is definitely not accurate. It's not, bro. Because like like you said, not everybody, you know, everybody, not everybody's going to heaven. That's the honest truth. And people, mm-hmm. again, choose this. That's why he says, I came to die for the world. Mm-hmm. By giving my son to for the whole world who so believes in mm-hmm. Christ. To not condemn the world, but save the world. But save the world. So and it's like he's giving us the option, but people are still deciding not to do it. What can the man do? He going to force us? Now mm-hmm. we're just robots. Now we're AIs. Exactly. God is not going to do that. God is going to... Open up his arms, and if you want to come to him, you come to him. But if you don't, you don't, and a lot of people don't. And so he doesn't discipline those that don't. And I love the saying that God is a gentleman. He He knocks at the door of our hearts. He literally knocks. He doesn't just burst in the door. He doesn't just like open the door like, here I am. Mm -hmm. No, he literally knocks and let us open. We have to be open to receive. Mm -hmm. That's how he can come in and transform us if we're open to receive. And I'm thinking about... You know, a lot of uh, our viewers are in college or they're like working and stuff. And and you might be in a position where you are tempted, right? Mm-hmm. And you're a child of God and you're a son or daughter of the Lord. And you're in your college and somebody invites you to a frat party or whatever. Mm-hmm. Your body, your flesh wants to go. Of course. Your body, your flesh wants to be accepted and wants mm-hmm. to belong, right? Yeah. But then again, that's the thing. That's where it comes with a price. Mm-hmm. You have to say no. That is not who I am anymore. Yes. I have a new identity in the Lord. I'm not desiring that anymore. And you know what? You may desire that, Mm -hmm. but then you go to the Lord and be like, Lord, remove this desire from my heart. Remove this temptation from my heart, Lord. Yeah. Allow me to walk in a way that pleases you. And it's a daily thing of repentance. And especially when you're young and like you are, let's say, in a job and you see this girl and you're like lusting, let's Mm -hmm. say, or, or a girl lusting over a guy. It's again running back to the Father and saying, Lord, I do not want to conform to this world. I don't want to conform to the patterns of this world. I want to be set apart. I want to be different, Lord. Help me. Exactly. Help me, you know? But it's also in the same way that um, we can run to God. The Bible says this. The Bible says to walk in the Spirit tonight gratifies the desire of the flesh. It's also an obedience thing as well. Mm. Because you have to be able to be obedient to the spirit of God to not gratify the, the desires of your flesh. When you're walking in the spirit, again, it's something that you do and it's an actionable step. It's an actionable thing. It's something that you act upon mm-hmm. when you want to walk in the spirit because when you're denying yourself and picking up your cross daily, that's when you say, no, my flesh says this, but I say, no, my spirit, I, your spirit man has to be able to control your flesh. Mm. So when you're desiring, somebody's telling you, like, let's go to this fat party or whatever, and your flesh wants to, if you give in to that, if you give in to that, I'm not saying you're not a Christian, I'm not saying you don't love God, but your flesh is now controlling your spirit, man, because you're not submitted fully. The Bible says to submit to the spirit, to not gratify the, the, the desires of the flesh. So if that's what you're doing, it shows that you need to be pruned, you need to be obedient, you need to be disciplined in, in, in the Lord, you know, because a lot of things, 
we can pray for. But if we pray for it, but don't have the capacity to receive it, mm. we won't be able to see the fruits of it. So there's a lot of things that, um, you know, you want and you're desiring, but there's no actionable steps for you to actually receive it. You know what I'm saying? So the spirit, these things are spiritual. These things are spiritual. And so when you are able to discipline yourself to submit to the Lord, to submit to the spirit, to submit to God, to submit to your word, to submit to prayer, to submit to fasting. These things are no longer going to be a hard temptation because there will still be temptation, but they won't be hard to deny. Why? Because you're walking in the spirit. And so a lot of things that I used to deal with when I was in the world can no longer touch me. It can no longer touch me. But when I was walking with the Lord in the few, in the beginning of the years, it was hard. I was like, man, like this is tough. Do, do, do. I got to go through this. I got to go through that. But I trained myself. I trained myself to submit to my spirit. I trained myself to listen to the voice of God. I trained myself with the word and with prayer to learn how to yield to my spirit, man, instead of my flesh. Mm. So now when these things come, when this temptation comes, where can the devil hit me at? Because I've trained myself to be spiritually strong in these areas that I used to lack in. But it took obedience to do that. You mm -hmm. know, it took obedience to do that. It is obedience. And um, talking about obedience, I want to talk about the sacrifice of Abraham and Isaac. And if you guys never heard the story, then I definitely want you guys to go in your Bibles and read it and study it because it's such an amazing picture of obedience. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start in Genesis 22. And it's, uh, yeah, 22 verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Take your son, he said, your only son, mm -hmm. Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as burnt offerings on one of the mountains, and I will tell you, and I will tell you about. So Abraham got up early in the morning. I want to stop right there. Mm -hmm. So God is telling Abraham, go to the mountain and sacrifice your son, Isaac. And Abraham didn't say, God, why? God, but why? But like, he's my only son. But like, mm -hmm. you know how hard it took me and my wife, Sarah, to have Isaac. Yeah. He literally got up early in the morning and went to the mountain. He didn't question God. Saddled his donkey and took him to of his young man and his son, Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and mm -hmm. set out to go to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son, Isaac. Mm. Can you picture that? You laying your son yeah. like a lamb, <laughs> putting wood yeah. to sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. This is insane. Honestly, this is a really crazy picture right here. In his hand, he took the fire mm -hmm. and the knife, and the two of them walked on together. Then Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham, and said, My father. And he replied, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt <laughs> offerings? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And then the two of them walked on together. Then they arrived at the place that God had told them about. Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. Mm -hmm. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he replied, here I am. Then he said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, mm -hmm. since you have not withheld your only son for, from me. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket of his horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. So today it is said, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. So I think this is such a crazy picture of trust insane bro so much in that. literally trust and at so the beginning he said 
after these things, God tested Abraham. God can test you. Mm-hmm. God can test your faith. Yeah. Just to see where you're at with him. And there are certain things that you are holding on to so badly that it is literally keeping you from your blessing. It is keeping you from your from the next level that you can be spiritually with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I can say from my own experience, um, so at the beginning of last year, I was struggling so much with holding tightly to a blessing that God gave me. But now this blessing overtook the Lord. Like I was putting that first in God. And God was telling me, like, my daughter, fix your eyes back to me. And mm-hmm. I was just like, Lord, I have so much things to do. I cannot do that. Yeah. Literally, God took it from me. He literally mm-hmm. took everything from me for like three months. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't even have desires to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Because he even took my desire from it. All because he wanted my attention. You know, and God can do that. God can literally turn your world upside down. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say, like, for no reason, but based on my disobedience, he did that. Yeah. Like, if I was obedient the first time, he wouldn't have done all of that. But he literally will go the extra mile to get your attention because that's how much he loves you. Yes, and that's how bro. much he literally cares about your soul. That he will remove things from your life just so he can test you and see. Exactly. Do you really, do you really love do me? Do you really love me? After he done so much, do mm-hmm. you really love me? And yeah. Seeing this and and seeing how Abraham was so obedient to the Lord Mm -hmm. and then seeing how much of an impact he did in humanity, Mm -hmm. it just goes to show that God will use you based on how much you trust him. Yes, bro. It's your ability to trust him that that will determine where you're going to be at in your faith, in your life. Yes, because you got to understand this, you know, discipline and obedience doesn't come with routine. Hmm. It comes with with how much you fear God. Because the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, there's a level of obedience that you will have. And it will be imparted in you. That you will no longer want to act upon certain things because of how much you fear the Lord. See, Abraham feared the Lord because God already gave him his son. So he knew God can do it. And if God can do it, God can also take it. Mm -hmm. So who am I to intervene on something that God had already ordained? If God had the power to give me my son, he's able to take it as well. I'm obedient to him. I fear him too much. Now, not even my son will get in the middle of me and God. Fear and trust. There's a level of fear that you have to have with the Lord, and it's not being scared. It's a respectful fear, knowing that he's all-knowing. Every breath that I take is because he allowed it. Every single second that I wake up is because he allowed it. I respect him. I love him earnestly. The 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 depths of my soul desires him in all, all all around. That whatever he says, I don't question it. I know that he's always working out for my greater good, and he always does. So if the Lord says something that is outrageous, and you're trying to seek explanation, it's not that it's bad, but it's because you're lacking fear of God. Because things happen in our life where we sometimes don't know why. And we're like, Lord, what? But you can have the what, but then be like, okay, cool. What do you want me to do? I'm going to be obedient today. And it may be hard, but it all comes down to the level of how much reverence you have for the Lord. Because if you truly believe that he works everything out for your good and you truly love him, and you know that that's the God of the universe, and if he says something, he is doing it for my greater good, then you will submit to it with no questions asked. And you'll always see the fruits of that. So when Abraham submitted to that, and he had trust in the Lord. The Lord was like, look, the angel of the Lord said what? I see that you fear mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Because he feared God, no matter what it is that the Lord has given me, I fear him too much. If my son has to go, my son has to go. That's how much I fear the Lord. He said, don't worry about it. I'll provide a sacrifice for you. And then he provided another sacrifice for him. But it's mm-hmm. like the level of obedience comes from how much we actually fear God and how much we desire to be used by God too. That's so good. And and that's like you said, um, the angel of the Lord said, now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. Come on. And it's like, think about that. If you today were to get everything taken away from you, I'm talking about everything that means everything to you, your family, mm-hmm. like Job, your like Job, house, yeah. your everything. Will you worship God? Will you say, God, I love you? Hmm. Like, be honest. 
Because right now you're like, yeah, of course. And then it happens like, and you're like, well. And you're like, damn, like, how can a good God allow this to happen? Mm-hmm. It's like, do you actually fear the Lord? Do you do you know who you worship? Like, mm-hmm. genuinely, like, ask yourself, like, do you know who you worship? Do you know that God is not only a God of love, but he's, he's a righteous God? Mm-hmm. And there are consequences to our actions, of you course. know? And when you're thinking about sin, when you're playing with sin, when you're dip dabbling with sin, you really have to think, like, it's that godly fear yeah. that goes in, like, mm-hmm. I shouldn't be playing with the God of the universe. Of course. I shouldn't be doing things because I want to do it and then know that I can repent so then I can calculate my things because it's going to be a forgiving God and he loves me. That's premeditated sin. That's premeditated sin, but like people literally do that. They take advantage of God's grace Mm -hmm. and God's love and God is not a God who you can play with. Of course. And we see that Mm -hmm. in Genesis 3, which is the temptation in the fall. Adam and Eve had everything. They were in the garden and they were just living it up. Mm-hmm. Imagine a world with no sin, where mm-hmm. they were just running wild, having that communication with God. They were they had everything in that garden. But then when they fell and the sin literally overtook Eve and Adam, we see that there's consequences. Yeah. Okay, there's consequences to their sin. God disciplined them. And what God did, he kicked them out of the garden. Mm-hmm. And not only did he kick them out of the garden, but he also said that to Eve, I want to intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. You, your desire will be for your husband, yet he will rule over you. And then for Adam, 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 <laughs> for Adam, he said, Adam, uh, Adam, yeah. Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree mm-hmm. about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The grounds is cursed because of you. Mm-hmm. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow, wow. since you were taken from it. For you are dust, and you will return to dust. Yep. So God is saying, you play with sin? You disobeyed me? Now there's consequences. Of course. And I feel like that's what it comes down when you're also disobedient. And I was going to, before you go there, Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I have to say about that is that how does that look like now to us? If we play with sin, there was a certain grace that it will be lifted from us. Mm. A certain covering that will be lifted from us. Mm. Because God covers us because we are under his will. Right. But if we are outside of his will... What's going to happen? There's going to be things that are going to literally happen because you're not under the covering of God. Yeah. So that's a consequence. You know, it's not lightly that you can just play with sin, be sexual or do bad things or like gossip or or, or do things that don't please the Lord. You have to be very well prepared. Mm-hmm. That consequence can come with that as well. Of course. Like the Bible says that disobedience is as equal as witchcraft. So there's a certain, I'm not going to say spell, but there's a certain... I mean, that's covered. Yeah, there's a to certain describe it. there's a certain door that you open when you're disobedient to God, where mm-hmm. it's as equal as witchcraft. Now, there's a certain thing that comes upon your life that now has you. The Bible says this: it, those that are in sin, He will give them up to their own desires. AKA, He will give them up to a reprobate of mind. So, can you break that down? When God says that when you're so deep in sin and you're dipping, dabbling, you're one day with the Lord, but yet you're back in sin. And then you're one day with the Lord. But you, again, it's lack of fear where you feel like there's enough grace, there's enough time. The Bible says in the last days, it will be like the days of Noah. People will drink, have weddings, have fun, all of these things. And then judgment will come like a, a woman who's about to give labor. So it's basically telling you this, that when you feel like you are free to do whatever and you're just open to just say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I don't care. You know, I love God on Sundays, but the rest of the weeks, I'm going to gossip. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I know I'm outside of God's will, but yet I have time. You're playing with fire, bro. You're playing with fire. And it's a certain time where the Holy Spirit will be lifted from you. Sorry. The Holy Spirit will be lifted from you because... If he's giving you up to your own desires, then that means that you're now on a mindset of just 
on that sin, cycling mm-hmm. back to that sin. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing that can get you out of it. You're now giving into your own desires, meaning your flesh, bro. So whatever your flesh is craving, that's what you will do. That's who you will yield to. And where your flesh goes. Where is your death. flesh going? Literally death. death. So your flesh only craves anything that gives it death because that's all it knows. You know, our bodies are already damned. We're already, we're already set for damnation. Like there's nothing that we can do to save this body because it's already set for death. Mm. So when you are giving up to your own desires, bro. That's so dangerous. You no longer fear God. You're not doing this sin continually. And when you do it, there's no conviction. If you, if you, if you really think about that and you're not saying, Lord, that's scary. Then you really don't have the fear of God in you. And you need the fear of God in you. You need to fear him with respect and with reverence. Knowing that you're supposed to do something, but yet you're not doing it. Now that's an act of disobedience. Now you're equaling your... The Bible says that it's as equal as witchcraft. Now he's comparing you to the evil, to, to, the, to the dark Rome. He's comparing you to the devil. He's comparing you to disobedience to the devil. Mm-hmm. You know how deep that is? The Bible says that the devil has been a liar since the beginning, bro. He's only, there's only evil in him. There's only one thing he knows how to do. It's, lie. It's lie, bro. And you'd be wicked. It's so wicked. And so when you're being compared to that because of your disobedience to God, God has, God can no longer do nothing but just let you be. That's why I say that when God does not send you somewhere or ordains you to do something and you just want to do it because, oh, I want to be a good Christian. This is what I want to do. There's certain things you're not yet ready to tap into, bro. And if you go to these places and do these things without God ordaining you, God can no longer cover you. God can no longer cover you. So let's be wise. And how do we become wise? By fearing God. Yeah. And By fearing the Lord. Hold on. So when we learn to fear the Lord and be wise in these areas and not do things out of our own accord, yes, you can have a zeal. Yes, you can have a desire. Yes, you can have such a passion for God. But there's certain things that God has not ordained you to do, but yet you're doing it anyways. And you know you don't have peace by doing it, but because you feel like you're a good Christian, I'm doing it. It's not really pleasing the Lord. And those that are dipping and dabbling with sin, knowing you shouldn't be doing it, knowing I should be walking in the spirit, you're walking in in, in slippery slope and you're walking in dangerous roads. Yeah, and like there's this TikTok video I saw the other day and it was um, a group of like young kids like youth like Mm -hmm. 18 20 somethings and they were pulling up to the church with little like Lil Nas like one of those rappers and then when they pulled up they like changed the the music to Mm. like a Christian song and they were like ha ha like like a joke and I'm like that is not funny Mm -hmm. like that is literally not funny like you saying that you're living a double life by pulling up to the church like with your worldly music and then Changing it because it's Sunday and you go to church. So what does that mean? That during the week, you're doing whatever you want to do. But then because you go to church on Sundays, you're all of a sudden saved. You're yeah. all of a sudden like that is literally living a lukewarm lifestyle to the core. And um, God does not play with those things, you guys. It's literally knowing who is that you serve, you know. And I feel like that's the thing about society and America that they made up this Jesus where this Jesus for them is a Jesus who mm-hmm. is all loving and all caring and like a hippie Jesus. Like that um, commercial in the Super Bowl, he he gets us. Oh, yeah, he gets us or whatever. Like he was, he was like a picture of like somebody like washing like... Everybody's feet. Everyone's feet. And it's like, if you go to the Bible, we see that he washed his disciples' feet, right? Yeah. So it is not that he's sitting in a bar... With a group of sinners that don't want to repent. No, he sat with sinners that wanted to change their lives. Mm-hmm. People just want to put this Jesus in the in their mind so they can feel better about their lifestyle. So mm-hmm. they can feel better about themselves. And it's not about how you feel. It's about God and obeying God for who he is. Not literally what yeah. you want him to be. So exactly. that's that punishment of God giving them up to their... What's the word? Their bit of mind. That's a really to their big, own desires. To their own desires. That's a big word, man. <laughs> I so would not. My fella. No llegaste ahí. No llegaste ahí. Um, you know, God giving you up to your own desires is truly, you guys, mm. it is so dangerous. If you are watching this and you're like, dang, 
I've been doing these things and I haven't felt conviction. Mm. If you're sitting watching this video, you're like, I, I've been thinking about this thing and I've been giving myself to this thing. Right. And I don't even feel bad anymore like I used to before. Yeah. Literally bring it up to the Lord and say, God, literally get on your face because you are on, on shaky ground. You're yes. on, on dangerous territory. Whenever I feel like I'm being convicted, mm -hmm. I feel so glad. I'm like, Lord, thank you. Thank you for me. conviction. Thank you for turning my head around. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I know that you're still working in me. Yep. You're not giving me up to my desires. You know, there are things that I do that I get convicted of. And I'm like, Lord, thank you so much. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have thought about this. I shouldn't have done this. That's yes. because the Lord is still working in me. So exactly. if you don't feel that in your life right now, get on your face. You need to. Get on your face because you, you are literally on shaky ground and it's very dangerous. Bro, the Bible says to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Okay? It's in Corinthians somewhere. Earnestly desire spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. The word earnestly means you, you desire it with intense desire. So it means intense desire. So when you want to be used by God or you want a certain freedom or you want something from the Lord, but yet you're not earnestly desiring it, it's a reflection of your heart. Because if you think that praying for five minutes for God to give you a breakthrough is earnestly desiring things from the Lord, it's not from God. God, use me, Lord. I want to go out and preach the gospel. I want the boldness of you, Lord. I want to lay hands on the sick, Lord, and let them be healed. I want to be used like the apostles, but you're not earnestly desiring these things and living a sacrificial life for the Lord, then your obedience for God is not where it needs to be. You're not really wanting this. You're putting up a front. You're putting up a front. Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord and said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. The Bible, the, he, I'm not letting you go. He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. He wrestled with me. the angel of the Lord? Yes. Jacob, he said, he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. So it's a level of desire that we have to get to. I got the word for you. A certain level of cry that we have to give up to God for us to actually see breakthrough and for us to actually see ourselves living this life out. I got the word for you. God is not going to who? No, it's a level of obsession, bro. Obsession. That's a word. You have to get into a level of obsession. You guys think I boast in the Lord. I boast in the Lord. But do you guys think like for us to, you know, be here and teach about the word of God and wow, like these are new things that we learn from the Do you think these things just come just to come? Or do you don't ever judge people um what you see on social media and say, oh, that's a that's a gift or that's an anointing and that's it. No, bro. A lot of these people have spent hours and hours, timeless and timeless time in prayer, in their faith, seeking the Lord, earnestly desiring these gifts. And that's why God is using them the way that He's using them. So a lot of your favorite preachers and a lot of your favorite pastors, you don't see the behind the scenes and you're desiring to be used like them, but yet you're not applying yourself or positioning yourself for God to use you in that way. Mm. You thinking fasting is just your phone. Mm -hmm. When fasting is abstaining from food, you think fasting is just a Daniel fast. When fasting is something sacrificial, bro, Jesus fasted with 40 days and 40 nights, no water, no nothing. I'm not saying to do that. That has to be God ordained. But I'm saying is that when you earnestly desire things, you go through processes, you go through things, you go through experiences, you go through situations where it's going to prune you, bro, where it's going to hurt, bro. It's going to be painful, like I said in the word of God. People don't want to go through pain. People don't want to go through suffering. People say they want to die for Jesus, but then the first chance they get to talk about Jesus, they're shy, they're scared, they're this, they're that. They're putting up a wall. You don't really want God, bro. So for you to actually mock God and say, Lord, I want to do this for you. I want to do that for you. And then get mad at God for not giving it to you because you're not positioning yourself to actually receive it from God is your fault, not God. Is your fault, not God. And so we have to get into the position of earnestly desiring these things. You want your breakthrough? You want to be let go from depression, these sins, and all these habitual things that you're going through? Bro, earnestly desire these things and God will give it to you. Knock and the door shall be open to you. Seek and I shall, you know, you, mm -hmm. I shall answer. You have to really want it for the Lord to actually come through. It is not just a 15-minute thing. It is not just a week thing. It is a daily lifestyle. And for you to actually see change, you have to live it out in fullness. Yeah, like you said, like you always say, you know, I want to die. I will die for Jesus. Like Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is everything, and I love him. You may love him, mm -hmm. but then when the opportunity arises where you actually have to die, 
<laughs> yeah, ahora. No, for real. Like, not die, like, actually die. But, but maybe yeah. die that way. Yeah, it but, could be. But, but die in the spiritual? Mm -hmm. Lay your flesh? Your flesh? Your desires? Your desires? Oh, oh no, no. My opportunity? You have a 100,000 opportunity or a good job, a salary job, but God says, no, keep working here for 50K? What do you that's, that's dying. That's dying. That's like, hold on, Lord. <laughs> it's like, hold that's 100K. <laughs> God says, no, I need you to be here because I need you to be close to the church because I need you to do my, like, what are you doing? Exactly. And then, well, like you said, if we want to live like the apostles, out of us are like, I want to be like Paul. Mm -hmm. I want to be like Peter. But then you're not willing to live the way that they lived. Come on. You know that they didn't live in a beautiful house, driving a nice car, or like driving the, I don't know, back then, like the best horse. The best. <laughs> ah! <laughs> they didn't have a yacht. They were walking. <laughs> they didn't have a, a nice boat because they were traveling like yeah, through boats. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have none of that. All their time, was their thoughts. He, Paul didn't even have a wife. That's what I'm, I was literally about to say that, bro. Paul didn't have a wife. My man was sold out. He was sold out for Jesus. He said, if, my, if I could recommend you something, don't have a wife. Fully be on the mission of the Lord. Fully focus on the Lord if I could recommend it to you. He and was telling that, you. And that is, you know how you how you call that? Storing your treasures in heaven. Yes. Because he didn't have any treasures here. Matter of fact, my guy was stoned. Mm -hmm. My guy was thrown to in jail. He was beaten. He was mocked. He was overworked. Apostles he was going headed. to town to town, writing letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> writing yep. letters left Letter. and right. Yep. And you know what? He literally was doing it all for what? For the glory of God. His mission was to glorify the Lord. And that for me, it is so beautiful. And again, how everything. does that look like in today's society? How does that look like? Because honestly, a lot of people are living with that mission. They're called to do mm -hmm. that. And we see that in missionaries. They're yeah. literally called out to go and preach the gospel mm -hmm. and, and sacrifice certain things like a nice house and nice apartment, all these things. And I see it with your friends that mm -hmm. they do that. Um, but, you know, a lot of us have families. I am married. I'm about to have a kid. Yep. Um, I have a job and we have things. But then again, it's about how can I make my life a ministry? How can I serve those around me? Regardless of it all, yeah. Regardless of my circumstances, of my responsibilities. How, if you go to school, if you have goals and dreams, it's like, how can I live a life that wherever I walk into, whatever room I walk into, mm -hmm. I just show and, and exude the light of the Lord. How I mean, can I make my home a place where people come in? They're like, oh, yeah. I feel so Peace. peaceful here. How can I? How can I be a person that shows Jesus without saying a word? And um, a lot of that has to do with your character. A lot of that has to do with your relationship with God. Yeah. A lot of that has to do with surrendering mm -hmm. and walking in obedience and being so sacrificial with your life. Yeah. That God can use you. For his glory. For his glory, yeah. It's all right. One way that you can see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell them what happened. <laughs> I'm sorry. It seems like a big jump from like being serious to not us laughing. But something just happened and you just threw us out. Ooh, the audio wasn't recorded for the past four minutes. <laughs> for the past like 20 minutes. Bro. No, no, four, four. No, it was four minutes. Oh, that was four minutes? Yeah, praise the God, praise God. But we spoke about so many things. <laughs> Damn, 20 minutes is crazy. It now we did speak about a lot. But it felt like 20. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm sweating. <laughs> Go. Lord. What I was going to say was, um, <laughs> where was I at, bro? Oh, forcing yourself. You have to force yourself to position yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, okay. Peace. You have to force yourself. Actually, you have to force yourself to actually position yourself um, to hear from God or to be in that place with the Lord. Forcing yourself is key. You want you asking me how do I get more obedient or how do I you know more discipline whatever. You force yourself to go to the gym to see results in the gym, right? You force yourself to wake up early. You want to build a new habits, new routine. You force yourself to wake up early. You want to lose weight. You force yourself to diet, right? Mm -hmm. But then you don't force yourself to be in the presence of God. You don't force yourself to pray. You don't force yourself to read the word of God. But yet you want to see spiritual increase? Mm -hmm. Where? Where are you going to see it? Right. Nowhere. You need to force yourself because if you're not forcing yourself to do it, your flesh is forcing you to do something else. 
if you're not forcing your spirit man to submit to the things of God, your flesh will be forced to do other things, aka sinful actions. You will your mind will wander any somewhere else. But again, for you to fulfill the desires, do um walk in the spirit to not fulfill the desires of the flesh, walk in the spirit. When you walk it in the spirit, it's an actionable thing. You're doing it consistently. You're training yourself to be this type of person. So one advice I can give you to grow spiritually is force yourself to do these things for the Lord. Force yourself to read. Force yourself to go in prayer. And when you're not, don't go in there five minutes, six minutes. Okay, I'm done. I just forced myself to do it. Come on. Like, don't leave that spot until you feel the presence of God. Don't leave that spot until you hear from God. You, how, how bad do you really want it? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to think about, okay, how can we glorify the Lord? How can we exalt the Lord? Yes. How can we be the salt of the earth every single day? Right. And that looks like differently for everyone, you mm -hmm. know? Like for me, um, my focus is to walk into a room and exude the Lord. I want to have the boldness like Paul and be empowered by the Holy Spirit to walk in a pizzeria. Mm -hmm. And if I feel led to preach to someone, right? you know, like be the salt of the earth, be the difference because we have to have also that urgency in our daily lives that it looks pretty normal. Like we have a family and all those things, right. but whenever you have the opportunity to preach, literally preach with an urgency because you never know when that person will be the last day on right. the earth. When is going to be the last time that you're going to have the opportunity to see that person? And it's like that urgency, that fire mm -hmm. has to be there if we want to be the hands and feet of if the we Lord. Want to be the we don't have to live a life where it seems so like glamorous and have a social media platform right. and, and and look the part, yes. but not be the part. Let's don't, not do that. Do Let's that. not look the part and not be the part. And in the Bible, it says, um, I believe it's in John, I think I... um. <laughs> <laughs> one second you guys no. i close i closed the um my bible like. but in john it says that i am not gonna find it okay. it says um i literally just read it it says find it find it find it find it okay when um <laughs> thank you <laughs> when she said don't look apart be apart is so true you don't want to look you don't have a form of godliness that was what you're looking for to have a form of godliness but no god in them yeah. No. <laughs> you don't want to be that person, though. That's not the verse. You don't want to be that person that has a form of godliness, a form of holiness, holier than that. Look at me, suit and tied up. Mm. But walking with no God in you. There is no power in you. I've seen people, suit and ties, you know, and they've seen people in need of prayer and whatever. They just pass right by them. I'm like, what? There is no God in you, bro. Mm. There's no God in you. There's no compelling. There's no urgency. There's no overflowing spirit. Your spirit is not overflowing when you're like, I can hear from God so effortlessly, you know, because you have a form of godliness, but no God in you. And in Peter, it says this. Why you find that? I can't. <laughs> in Peter. It's in the Gospels, you guys. Don't worry, I won't find when it. When you, um, in Peter, where it says this, Peter 1, 3, 3. Your beauty, this is for women, but this can also be implied to your spiritual life as well. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as an elaborate hairstyles or wearing of gold, jewelry, or fine clothing. Rather, it should be that the inner that your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is great, which is great worth in God's sight. Basically saying, bro, you don't have to look holier than thou. You don't have to look this way, you don't have to look that way. It doesn't matter about what you're looking outside. It doesn't matter how you look mm. outside. It matters what's inside, what's in your heart. Where is your heart at? That's the truth on um, knowing where Christians at. Mm -hmm. It's not about what they look like, but it's about what spirit is 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 they're walking in. Amen. What spirit is leading them? Yes. Because a lot of these Christians that don't look apart are walking in power and they're ha they have manifestations of the spirit of God and there's true transformation in their life. But other Christians are looking at them saying, you don't look like the regular pastor. You don't look like yeah. the regular this, You're regular full that. of tattoos. You're full of tattoos and you look like this and you look like that. But yet, they're walking in power and they're you, used, with your Twitter fingers, saying you're not a man of God, you're not a woman of God, but the, 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 the Twitter fingers, the social media warriors, the social media warriors, calling them a false this, a false that, but yet you haven't even led one person to Christ. Who are you to judge? And not, not only that, God will judge in the same measurements that you judge. So if you're saying, God, they're not casting out demons, God's going to be like, you casting out demons? Mm. That's that's not, that, that demon, which is another 
fallacy, which is another buffoonery when Christians saying, oh, he's casting out uh, 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 the devil, but he's using witchcraft. What did Jesus say? Satan cannot cast out Satan, bro. It's in the your word. The kingdom of darkness cannot cast out the kingdom the of kingdom darkness. The kingdom of darkness. So if somebody's casting out a demon in the name of Jesus and you're saying it's witchcraft, it just shows where you at. It just shows how shallow you are spiritually. It really does, bro. It really shows where Christians are. And it's just, it, it almost like baffles me because Christians, let's get to a place where we're judging people based on their fruits and the manifestation and the power that they're walking in rather than what they are wearing, bro. Or what they're saying. And what they're saying and what spirit is leading them. The Bible says, you all know them by their fruits, not you shall know them by what they're wearing, and what they look like. Oh, another thing too is like, if you notice someone that has a lot of like popularity or a lot of following, yes. automatically those that make them righteous, that doesn't make that doesn't them good. Make them holy if now. somebody is really popular and they're preaching the word of God, but yet their fruits are not there, that's, that's not, that doesn't not, make them. That doesn't mean that they righteous. are righteous. Okay. And the verse I was looking for is actually in Matthew um 15, verse 8 and 9. And this verse is in another gospel. I was looking at it mm -hmm. in another one, but it's in different gospels, mm -hmm. the same verse. This people honors me with their lips, but their, but their hearts, hearts is far, far from, from me. me. They worship me in vain, teaching us doctrine, human commands. Yeah. That's pretty much saying that a lot of people are saying all these things, all the righteous things. For example, like if you're dating someone and you're like telling your friends in youth group and young adults like, hey, you know, like me and my my fiance or my boyfriend are waiting till marriage, but yet you're fornicating. Literally, God can see that. I'm like? sorry to break it to you, but like God can see what you're doing in secret. He sees what's in your heart. It's like those Pharisees that be preaching and, and, and not preaching, but they be praying out loud mm -hmm. in front of <laughs> in front of everyone. And inside, they're rotting. They're doing it so people can see them. Yes. They're doing it for people to, to give them applause. glory yeah. and give them an applause. So it's like that is literally... In vain. In it's vain. Saying, it's for nothing. It's, it's, it's for nothing. You, you already got your reward there. You want applause from people? That's your reward. They, That's your reward from the Heavenly Father. They worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. A lot of Christians worship God with their lips. A lot of Christians sound very good. Mm -hmm. Their words are great. But how long until you actually start seeing their fruits? But their hearts are so far from me. They sound so great, but yet they're cursing in the same sentence and telling you that they don't have no convictions of that. And it's like, there's certain things that it's just like, bro, you can tell that because of what you're saying, your heart is not in the right posture. You're saying one thing, but your actions are another. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't take, it doesn't take, uh, 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 you know, somebody super smart to know that. Like, you know, your, your, your actions are not matching up with your words. Right. That's what it basically means. And this is your weekly reminder to stop. Just stop looking at these influencers. Even us. Don't listen. Don't look at here, me. Because then you gonna Don't look at me. Because the Lord gonna look at I'm gonna be in trouble with God because of you. <laughs> don't look at me. I ain't trying to be in trouble with the Lord. Look at him. Exactly. Literally <laughs> go to your word. We're reading and we like all oh. oh, these things. Go to the word. Literally have Jesus as your example. Have idolize him. Yeah. Worship him. Look up to him. Like I'm telling you guys. There's so many people that look at their lives and look at their spiritual life and they think, oh my gosh, like, I'm not good enough. How can, why can I preach the way that he preaches? Why can I speak the way that she speaks? Why can I have the knowledge like this influencer? Why can I have the platform to, to glorify you, Lord? And God is saying, you don't have to do that. You don't have, you don't need none of that. All you need is to serve me. Serve right. me. Literally, like your life looks different. Your life should be completely different and you shouldn't compare yourself to no one else no one else no one else because i'm telling you sometimes you see someone and their reality is completely different yes. they're doing it for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. the wrong motives and there's one person that will never let you down and that's jesus christ he will never let you down right. and let's stop idolizing these people and let's stop doing things um so people can can, can applaud applaud you and glorify people can glorify you, you. Yeah. um when we should be getting that and seeking that from God, which he freely gives. And he will never turn you away from that. Yeah, like, learn to understand this. Okay. In Leviticus, it says this, right? I think it's Leviticus 19 or whatever, which a lot of Christians talk about tattoos or whatever, which is a little bit deviating, but 18, 20, something like that, where it's talking about 
you can't cut the flesh. Don't do not make markings of your flesh. But then if you go a little bit before that, it says that you cannot cut the side the side of your face <coughs> or the side of your head. AKA you can't get haircuts. You can't cut your hair. Why are Christians talking about that? They're only talking about tattoos. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's you're, just picking you're, and choosing. you're picking and choosing at this point now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you're judging without having full contextual evidence on what you're even talking about, which is a lot of things a lot of Christians do. Don't be this type of Christian where you're casting out stones and you're, you're, you're Bible says he will judge you in the same measurements that you will judge others. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Christians do that because they feel better about themselves. They, they, exactly. You're filling up your ego. Like, yes. look at you. You're, like you're, you, you're better than thou. You, you have no tattoos that. and you do, like you're walking in sin. But you are not doing nothing for the kingdom of the Lord for you to be talking about certain people. You don't know what it is to be in a pulpit. You don't know what it is to run a church. You don't know what it is to have people to look after. You know what it has to have a, a, a flock and have sheep. You don't know, you don't know these things. As a pastor. So it's like you're putting yourself in these positions, and I'm not saying to righteously judge. You can definitely righteously judge. But most of you are judging without even praying or asking God, did God even send me? Because what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a slippery slope of God. Because if he's a man of God or a woman of God sent by God, and you're talking bad about them, or you're trying to bring them down or whatever, now you're coming against God. Yeah. Because um, who was it? Um, the guy says that, uh, was it Abraham or was it Moses? Well, he's like, I'm a friend. Uh, uh, they're, they're a friend of God. AKA whatever they were going through. No, it's that it's, it's that um, prophet that 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 killed bro, the kids with the bears. Elijah, no. Elijah, no. Like if you come if you come after mm -hmm. a child of God, I don't think it's Elijah actually. No, um, no, if not. you if you come after a child of God, you're coming after God. I know it. Literally, no, that's I'm telling you, bro. That's literally how it is. If you come after, if somebody comes after you, Abraham, they're coming after God. I know it's Abraham. That's why you should be like letting God fight your battles because. They're Bro, coming after the Lord. They're coming after the Lord. And you should never want to intervene in that. The Bible says that God called Abraham a friend, bro. You feel what I'm saying? So anything that he did, and I will literally go deep into, into the, um, the verse that I read where God intervened for Abraham. It, it was deep. And he said, which one of you are amongst you are, uh, if you were a prophet? Like, he just goes deep. I'm not going to go into it. But those that are walking with the Lord and those that have the anointing of God and those that God is literally covering... And God is using to bring to the faith you're talking down upon. You're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. And you don't want to do that, bro. And you don't want to do that. But another thing you were saying, if you are, let's say, like, in a way, I think that the people that are in ministry are the most holier than thou sometimes. And you have to respect them. Of course. You have to respect way. authority a thousand percent. But, you know, like a youth leader, like, or someone that they keep... Correcting someone is good. Correction is good. But when it comes to doing it from like, I want to be above you. I want to like Definitely. have the congregation look at me. That is literally the wrong place to be. Because like you said, it's a big responsibility to lead the sheep uh, in, in the church. Of big responsibility. And when you have that title, you need to walk in 100% humbleness mm -hmm. and humility. But you can see a lot of people that are... um. It doesn't have to be gifts, but you have to be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And some of them have these congregations, but they're sweet with their words, but they have no power of the Holy Spirit. There's no transformation. People are going and not being transformed. They're staying the same. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And I agree with you on that area. And um, you're 110% on that. But when it comes to people who aren't even praying to God, asking them, God, are they false or they're not? They're just saying it because of one 15 minute, yeah, that's different. 15 second clip. And now you're saying this and that you're, 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 you're shallow spiritually. I don't come out and be like, yo, this person, that person doing this and that, bro, it's important that we pray about these things and ask God, what are they doing? Like, and God, I pray to have grace and mercy over their life. You know, I pray that you keep using them. I pray that they repent and they come to you. That's the heart that we got to have, bro. Because again, we're one body. Mm -hmm. Why are we dividing ourselves all the time? Because he has tattoos and, and this person doesn't. Who makes him holier than thou? No, it depends on who the spirit that is they're walking in and, and even, the power that they're and walking in. And I'm not in. there to say that even denominations is denominations a is huge another thing. thing divider. It's not divides biblical. the body. And it's, it's like, it's not biblical at all. But I brought up the church thing because I feel like a lot of people have church hurt and mm -hmm. it is 100% valid. I'm telling you right now. Some like, of them. I'm going to be honest. Some of them. Obviously not all of them. Because a lot of people can see correction from their parents or anything else. I was going to go there. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they're correcting you because you're doing something wrong, now you're church hurt? Like, now you're no, being sensitive because you go don't want to see correction. Like, like, there are some churches that are truly, like, are now walking 
in the wisdom of the Lord because like for example this is church uh Pentecostal church Santa Doctrina in the art right Doctrina. so I watch a lot of things about like Dominican churches because I love it mm. and um but there's this one church though that there's like a, a person in the church that he now does like YouTube videos with like mm -hmm. a worldly person but like his segment in that worldly channel is all about God yeah so he's bringing people from the world to hear the word of God so it's right. good Of course. But then now his pastor is disciplining him to not go there because he cannot be where worldly people are. Yeah, which or like, is crazy. you know what I'm saying? So he's like, that is that's like religion. That's truly religion. Like you're bringing, like you're in the world, but you're not off the world. Exactly. Like you can be an actress working in Hollywood, yes. bringing the light of the Lord in a dark place. That's yeah. what we're called to do. So I'm like, you know, that's like that's bad way to discipline someone. A horrible way. Yes. From from a I way agree. of you know you want to belittle them because your authority. Like, because you have authority yeah. and and it's bringing so much destruction on this person. Now in American church, people literally throw the word church her so, so loosely and we sometimes don't understand what that even means like you've been corrected because you are walking in sexual sin and you're worship leader and now you're not going to sing let's That's, be honest no for real like and you're not gonna sing now because you are you have to address that with the lord right that is protecting the congregation because literally you leading somebody in the spirit in worship is such a holy moment bro And everyone that is on that stage, on that pulpit, needs to be right with the Lord. Tell you. So if your church is 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 strict about certain things like that, like they care about your spiritual life, yeah. and they want you to get better before you start leading anyone else, that is not a bad thing. A That's bad good thing. correction. That's it's good just a discipline. whole bunch of disobedient kids. I feel like That's what it is. A whole bunch of disobedient kids that don't want um advice or don't want mentorship or leadership they just want to do whatever they want to do like mm -hmm. who are you to think i want to do this i want to do that when you're submitted to somebody you're submitted to them and god has placed certain people in your life to better your spiritual walk so for you to be like i'm church hurt because i was with this worldly person and my pastor said not to be with them they're mm -hmm. sparing you bro they're trying to protect you they're literally trying what to a, protect you what, what, a, what the heck you get church hurt from when they're just trying to look out for you you uh -huh. know what i'm saying so all this comes back to and wrapping it around to We need to be obedient to the voice of God. And we need to be disciplined to the things of God. Because mm -hmm. when we are obedient and disciplined to the things of God, it's easy for us to hear from the Lord. When right. these situations are happening and we want to act in our flesh, exactly. since we're walking in the spirit, mm -hmm. God will convict us. Because we've been obedient, we've been trained, we've been pruned to learn how to walk in the things of God. So when things look like this, or in the heat of the moment, somebody's telling you, don't talk to this person, you're going to be like, whoa, like, Don't talk to this person. Like, who are you? But then the Holy Spirit will tell you on where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's the place that we need to get to, where we're so trained by the things of God that we're no longer bothered. We're in peace. Or we're living in joy, bro. We have ears to discern when it comes from God and when it doesn't come from God. Yeah. Another example is like, if you have your mom and you say, yo, don't hang out with that girl. Right? And your mom is, is a woman of God. Right. Right. And you still go and you date that girl. And then guess what? She mm. breaks your, your heart. And you're like, you're like, oh, my mom was right. My mom was right. You know, like my parent, my sister was right. My brother was right. And it's like, you need to understand that sometimes mm. God uses people in your life that are right with the Lord. That you see fruit. That they actually care about you and mm -hmm. they care about God. And God can use them to speak a word in your life. And discerning that is so important. So, again, it's not all about... Oh, you know, people don't care. People just want me to like not do this. No, sometimes it's for your good and it's for your protection. Yeah. And our rebel heart and our and our flesh can get in the way of that. And God can spare us so much for so many heartbreak and so many things that we can go through if we are tangible and we and we are 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 very um sensitive, sensitive. to the voice of God. Yeah. Get to that place. Get to that place spiritually. And um one last thing I want to add. Um, in the book of Second Chronicles, in chapter 16, this verse came out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. and God brought it up literally during this podcast. And it's um, chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong for those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. Mm -hmm. God is seeking to show himself strongly in your life. Mm -hmm. God is seeking to be strong force in your life. 
but the key word is for those that are devoted to him. Are you devoted yes, to him? Bro. And when you're devoted to the Lord, like we spoke about, it is in obedience. It is in discipline. Mm -hmm. It is in a sacrificial love like Abraham where you just don't care. What God gives, he can take away. Yeah. And having that heart and that open hand uh, um, theory where it's like you put it in here, God, and it's open. So you can take it away whenever you want to exactly. take it away. Just for my betterment. Because at the end of the day, like we said in this podcast, in this episode, that life is so short that our treasures should truly be stored in heaven. And it, mm -hmm. shouldn't, it shouldn't be stored here on earth. And a lot of the times we are so caught up in about what people say about us and um, people's opinions and, and mm -hmm. all these things that we lose sight. We lose sight of the Lord. Yeah. And we're missing out on so many things, so many breakthroughs because we want to please man instead of pleasing the Lord. So if you're going through a season right now where you're being disciplined, if you're going through a season right now where you're being obedient to the Lord, even if it hurts, yeah. know that there's a joy coming. Just like Jesus when he was on the cross, mm -hmm. he literally was suffering there. But he was like, I know there's a joy because whatever comes from God, from my father is good. And because of Jesus and his sacrifice, his big obedient sacrifice mm -hmm. we get to have eternal life yes bro so there's always a reward yes, and it may bro. not be earthly but it is heavenly so with that being said the bible says here in proverbs 29 25 fear of man will prove to be a snare but whoever trusts in the lord is kept safe mm -hmm. don't live for people live for god because mm -hmm. that's your safe haven that's where you find purpose. That's where you find satisfaction. You will never please man, ever. But when you please God, you're all about your father's business. People are not going to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. The Lord is, bro. Be about your father's business. I don't care what people say about me if mm -hmm. I'm doing God's will. If God tells me to speak about something, I'm going to speak about it, bro. I have no fear. I fear God too much to think about what this next person is going to say about me. So live in that same way. A, 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 a sign that you're walking in obedience and that you're walking in sacrifice and that you're walking discipline to the Lord is a manifestation of God wherever you go. Mm. That's a sign that you're in obedience and in according to God. Because if you're in disobedience, you talking about God will make you sound contradictor, contradictory mm -hmm. or you will sound like you're contradicting yourself. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't even talk about the Lord sign of disobedience because when you get a chance to talk about something let's say relationships yeah you know a godly relationship but you're in sin with your boyfriend or girlfriend you will never speak about god because that conviction will come about like who am i you know what i'm saying you're walking in disobedience and listen take all of this with love because there's room to make mistakes we all make mistakes so don't think that you're supposed to be perfect 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 obedient obedient, obedient but you're not gonna make mistakes no that's a lie I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's part of the journey. It's part of growth. Embrace mistakes knowing that you can learn from it. But don't be comfortable with mistakes and redo the same mistakes willingly because now you're walking in disobedience with God. So a sign that you're walking in obedience, again, is that you manifest God wherever you go. And if you feel like, man, like I'm a little shy to talk about the Lord. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Fill yourself up with God. Go to that secret place. Force yourself to do these things. And once you start practicing spiritual things, my goodness, you're going to be a powerhouse for the Lord. You're going to look at us and be like, there, I'm somewhere else with the Lord. <laughs> humbly, humbly though. But it, that's where I want you to be. I want you to be greater than us. I want you to go out and, and be like, yo, like I was watching them one day, but that's crazy. I want to grow. I want to be some somewhere else. Because I, we, when we, people be like, hey, like you've helped me. With them. You've, <laughs> what? We're growing with them. We're growing with them. Yeah. So a lot of people say like, hey, I'm inspired by what you guys are doing. You guys have truly rekindled my fire or whatever. I want you to rekindle somebody else's fire. Mm. I want you to be that person that brings it to somebody else, to the nations. Yes. You're rekindling it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. If we did it for you, do it for somebody else. That's where you know that this seed is planted in the right place. Yeah. So wow. obedience and sacrifice. Obedience and discipline. Sorry, and discipline. <laughs> wow, that was yeah. so good. I mm -hmm. am so so excited for this, and I and I pray that this was good seed planted on good ground, mm -hmm. where the devil cannot choke the seed, 
but it's going to be planted and harvest multiple, triple to what we spoke about Amen. here. Amen. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We yes. cannot wait to hear your comments. And we love you. All of your love. We're so thankful. If you guys want to listen to this podcast, go to Spotify and iTunes. Yeah. And you guys can listen to this podcast. And while you're there, give us a little review, a little mm -hmm. um, rating. It means so much to us. And, and thank, thank you. you to all. Sorry. What were you going to say? Thank you guys so much for supporting us on yeah. our social medias, mm -hmm. on Instagram and TikTok. Like we are just so in love with you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for all, all of you that have been giving on cash oh, up yes. and stuff. We'll be having um other payment methods because I know a lot of you ask like, hey, PayPal's out, all these things. So we'll be working on that soon. Um, Again, thank you all for giving. And if you feel led to give, obviously pray about it and see what the Lord is is, is leading you to. Um, A lot of great things are coming. A lot of great things are coming. A lot of big things are coming. So we're just hoping in the Lord that he will do his will. So we love you guys. And again, thank you so much for your love. It is truly, truly unexplainable sometimes. Yeah. And before we leave, we appreciate um, you. You, you say a lot, like a lot of things are coming, coming, coming. Um, The thing is that. Sorry. All right. Um, The thing is that, um, you know, those things take time and we want to make sure that we do things with excellence. And of a lot course. of people think that, you know, if you see like Christian movies or like Christian music, oh yeah, Christian music, Christian movies. It's right. Like, we want to do things with excellence for you guys and mm -hmm. for the Lord. So. That's it? Yeah. We love you. We love you. And thank you guys so much for watching.